This video is on linearizing graphs using logarithms. Uh, so as your notes start off saying, this is a special linearizing technique that works with general equations that are power functions. Um, so actually, you know, any equation that we deal with uh, that has an exponent in it is a power function, right? Um, the general format for power function uh, that we use here is y is equal to c, a constant, times x, our independent variable, to some n power. The method of straight that we're going to use right, is to graph log y versus log x. This is what is going to be known as a log log plot. Now, log log plots are often used uh, because it is much more helpful to see uh, is power and data in a linear sense. Um, the linearization actually happens on the axes, and um, the axes are uh, logarithmically set up. Um, we're not going to be doing that in this class. We'll actually be taking the logarithm of all of the data, um, and I'm going to show you that right here in our derivation. Uh, this is just algebra 2, I believe. Uh, so we start out with our power function, y equals c times x to the n. And we're going to take a log of both sides, okay? And uh, yes, I hope you're writing this down. This is your homework to write down these notes, which I will be checking on Monday. Hopefully you watch this video before you hear this. Um, if not, learn to listen in class when I sign for please. Okay. Trump is done with babbling. So I take the log of both sides. Go. Um, now, we know from our rules of logarithms that if you take the log of uh, the product of two things, that's the same as adding the log of both those other things. So, log of c plus log of x to the n. And then our other logarithm rule, if you have a uh, uh, variable you're taking the logarithm of is to some power, that is the same as that's power times the log of that variable. So when we are finished here, it looks like this. Okay, if you do not remember your logarithm rules, uh, now would be a good time to get those old algebra two notes and dust them off and uh, take a looky. All right. So this, hopefully, we've been talking about slope-intercept form. Uh, should look a little bit um, familiar. If I just write out my slope intercept form again, we had sign up, right, y equals mx plus b, and then I write what I just had on the previous slide below that. I'm just going to switch things around just a little bit though, so it would be nice if we press n times log x plus log c. Um, for our log log plot, what we'll see is that our y is our log y, our x is our log x, our slope will be our power n, and our y-intercept will be the log of the constant, okay? So if we have a plot of log of log data, we can easily figure out what the constant is in the power function. We can also figure out what the exponent is in the power function. Very powerful tool using logarithms as a method of linearization or straightening. Okay. Let's look at some examples. All right. Uh, if we have here um, y equals, we'll say something like this, y equals some constant times x squared. That's what this function would be. If we took the logarithm of y and logarithm of x and plotted it, it would look something like this, all right, where our slope would be equal to 2, okay, and the y-intercept would be equal to the log of c. All right, we could easily uh, calculate c all right, by taking each side, uh, taking 10 to each side's power. All right? So, all right, next, if we had some equation that looked like this, y equals c times 1 over x, or if this equation maybe was uh, y equals c times 1 over x squared, it could be either one, okay? And we take the logarithm of y and x, you're going to have something that looks like this, where your slope, okay, is equal to negative 1 if it's the first one, or your slope is equal to negative 2 if it's the other function, okay, the inverse square function. And again, uh, calculating the uh, y-intercept is the same as before uh, to get c. 
Um, all right. Next, if you have a function that looks like this, y equals c times x to the one half power. Okay, remember one half square root. All right. Um, what you will have, okay, is a graph that looks like this, a little bit flatter than the other one that's up there, and the slope will be equal to one half, zero point five. All right. Nothing surprising there. It's just following the same pattern. Actually, this guy is down here. I, hmm. Well, we're not going to do this guy, so I wonder if I can just quickly uh, do a crop. Nope. Okay. Um, this one was not the graph that is shown on your notes, so I'm, uh, well, I'm just going to draw it on there. It looks something like this, I believe, in your notes, right? So ignore the other one that's here. I'm sorry for that mistake. Uh, and in this case, this would be something like y equals like some constant times x to the first power, right? Since it's just a linear function. Um, and if you were to take the log of both, again, you get something that looks like this. And you guess what the slope would be? 1. All right. Again, it's the power that we're taking x to. All right. So those are some examples of linearizing with uh, logarithms. So these are the graphs that you would get for each of these types of functions. All right. And it's all about finding the slope to get the exponent, the power. Uh, again, if you want the constant that is in front of x uh, to whatever power, you just need to take uh, 10 to the y intercept. All right. Um, where did children get that from? Well, right here. Okay. The y intercept we call it b is equal to log of the semi log c. Okay. Well, if you just take 10 to the b. See it? There it is. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so the next page is a good example. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about why do we use this again? Well, the reason why we use this, okay, is that um, we're not sure. Oops. Go back here. Okay. So this is logarithmic straightening. All right. So why use logarithms? Well, we use logarithms when we're not sure what the function is supposed to be, what the relationship is supposed to look like. All right. That's the whole point of this. When we're really stuck, we don't have any background theory to check, you know, um, and maybe do a regression. Uh, we use it when we are not sure what the type of relationship is right. I'll use to check the exponent. So the example that you have there on the page is what is the relationship between kinetic energy and the speed for a uniformly accelerating object, right? Um, so how do we go about doing this? Okay, uh, the first step is to find error bars uh, for the straightened graph. It's not hard to get the line of best fit. To, to, to take the logarithm of all the data points, the x's and the y's, okay, and plot those data. Right? Once you've plotted that data, you need error bars. All right. Um, so right here, error bars needed on only one axis, obviously the one which has the most significant uncertainties. Uh, you have to use the greatest residual all right, for the data point with the highest percentage of uncertainty as the error bar on all data points, once you've chosen um, which one is most uh, significant, okay? which set of error bars is most significant. So if you look at the data for speed and kinetic energy on the left side of this page there, you notice speed is plus or minus 0.2 meters per second. Uh, the most significant uh, uh, uncertainty that is on is uh, the first value, uh, the second value, I guess, really one, um, which is 20% uh, of that value. But then if you look at kinetic energy, it's plus or minus two joules, and for the first value of five joules, that's 40% of it. So we're going to go with that, all right? That is going to be the most significant um, uh, uncertainty, okay? And so for that reason, all right, we're going to do the kinetic energy. And to 
find the greatest residual, all right, we're going to take the log of the smallest value, which would be 5 minus 2, all right, it's log 3, it's going to equal 0 0.477, all right, the actual value of that measurement in our log log plot would be 0 0.699, and the log of the larger value there, 5 plus 2, log 7, is just 0 0.845, okay. Uh, checking the residuals. All right, 0 0.699 minus 0 0.477 gives us 0 0.222. And uh, other residual would be 0 0.845 minus 0 uh, 0.699. That gives us 0 0.146. So what we've done here, guys, is we've figured out which um, where are the greatest uncertainties occurring? It's occurring at the measurement of the kinetic energy at five joules. Okay, and since the error bars, all right, uh, would actually vary for each data point. Okay, if we, you know, did this for each data point, I want to make life easy on you. Believe it or not, okay, I'm actually trying to make life easy on you. So, and ID is too as well. Really, it's not me, anyways. Um, but what we're doing, all right, is we're taking the biggest possible variance, all right, the biggest possible uncertainty, and we're using that for all of our data points. That is sloppy. I do not agree with it mathematically, as pretty much all things I do not agree with in terms of this IB physics uncertainty business, um, but we are using it, okay? So you're using the largest, all right, the most significant uncertainty, which is that that occurs at kinetic energy at five joules, okay? And you find the greatest residual based on these points, the highest percentage of uncertainty. And so every value is going to have an uncertainty, okay? The log KD values, their error bars will be plus or minus 0 0.222, okay? So when you actually do the analysis here, okay, uh, for this graph, what you end up with, okay, is a slope for your line of best fit that equals 1.980. Remember, the original form of function is y equals c times x to the n. Okay, so that slope that you've just found, all right, this is your n. Remember from the previous derivation, okay? And so what we get here, all right, our y-intercept on that graph is 0 0.7007, all right? Uh, this is log c, like we said before. Take 10 to this, all right? And what you end up with for c is 5.0. And so we have an equation now, all right? And that equation is that the kinetic energy, or y, is equal to 5 times v to the 1.98 power, okay? Now, the 1.98, because we plotted uncertainties with that, the actual slope or the power that we were taking to uh, when we solved this with the residuals for the slope is going to end up being plus or minus 0.62. Uh, you can probably end up reading uh, how to calculate those uh, residuals from the min and max, line, <laughs> min and max lines over there. Um, that's a pretty big uncertainty range for that power. But this makes sense, right? Because we know that the general formula for kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, all right? And uh, we know then that if we follow this through, that would probably tell us that the mass, if c was equal to 5, all right, that the mass was 10 kilograms of this object, all right? Um, so again, this is the point of using logarithms. It helps us to figure out what the power is supposed to be. It's not exact. Uh, but um, it agrees with uh, the theory that we do know, um, which typically we don't end up knowing that theory, but here we happen to, and we can see that this method agrees. So that is linear.